Good afternoon. Welcome to the first episode of All Things Iliast. My name is Umair Ilyas and I will be hosting this podcast for you. Beautiful, cloudy and humid day here in Canberra. Very, very happy to finally have some summer. We've had a few sunny days. The temperature has been as high as 38 degrees, which is amazing. Um, I just had to drive somewhere because my camera battery died uh, I had to buy a replacement battery didn't have any aircon on my car my back was wet felt gross loved all of it all things Ilya's podcast will uh, be about my hobbies my interests uh, the things that I do my experiences as a migrant of Pakistani origin in Australia, um, you could say an Asian Australian here and there as well. Cool, I had to do it. I had to do it. I've done it. It's out of my system. We'll see if I ever do it again. I don't promise that I will. I don't promise that I won't, but we shall see. Uh, it was stuck in my head. I just had to do it. So, on this podcast, I will be talking about interesting things, uh, anecdotes from my life, funny experiences, uh, some sports, some lighthearted conversation with you so we can both have a solid, happy, good, enjoyable time. First episode, it's out. Even the trailer was out. Please check that out as well. I edited all that myself. Thank you to YouTube and the content creators who are out there which taught your boy how to use Adobe and uh, do things, edit videos, mix sounds. Uh, so yeah, getting a hang of all my equipment, my laptop, my uh, microphone. Got a succulent plant for this podcast. Not sure if you can see it. If you can see it, that's Toby, my plant. Cool. So, um feel like a DJ here, I'm not going to lie. I've got all this equipment. I feel excited. I kind of want to, you know, you know what I mean? Like I've got these. Hi guys, Stacy here. Welcome to Triple J. Hope you're having a good day today in Canberra. A bit humid, but uh, enjoy the music. We are here to play your requests. Hopefully my song plays. Thank you, Sam, for requesting this song. I uh, hope your day is good. Stacy out. Um, I'll try to do this podcast mostly in English. And Urdu as well, like everything that I feel like I say in Urdu, I can translate it on the spot, which will save me the editing time of subtitles and trying to add text onto the videos. That's not a skill that I have mastered yet. And I'm doing it on my own, just alone with uh, in this room with camera in my face, talking like a madman, all excited and hyped up. I am also having my tea, and I call it chai. It's uh, the only food that's made for your soul. It, it, it goes directly to your soul. It recharges you. Um, it could be humid outside at, as it is now. It could be cold. It could be hot summer. It could be any time of the year. 
man likes his chai. I'll have it every morning, I'll have it in the afternoon, sometimes in the evening, sometimes at night. Four times a day, if not five. Three on average, but sometimes. Like I was sick a couple of days ago. I had a viral stomach bug, not fun. The next day I was not eating anything because I don't want to, you know what I mean? Like it's rough sometimes. Um, and I realized that within that four to five hour window, I was at my friend's house invited for a breakfast. I didn't eat much, but I had tea four times. Then I came home and had it again. I'm just going to have a sip now. Hope you don't mind. Hope I don't make like a weird sound in the, uh, in the mic. If I do, my apologies. Just to give you a desi touch of what um, I could be doing as a DJ um, or like an RJ, like a radio host. You know, probably uh, play some music. If I can find it, finding stuff sometimes uh, is hard. I'm trying to use my laptop, but incapable of it, and that's okay. With practice, hopefully I can make this experience more smoother for you and myself. I also just realized I've been staring into like a little like flip screen on the side of my camera uh, because I'm concerned about how I look. So I'm gonna try looking into the camera as I talk to you guys directly into the lens of this Canon M50 Mark II mirrorless camera. Know my tech guys, I know my tech. I, I did a bit of research before this venture and Assalamu alaikum, Pakistan. Apne ghar walon se pyar kijiye. Uzma meri call uthao. Ye message hai Ahmed se. Saira, mujhe maaf kar do. Maaf kar do Saira. Anyways, that's enough of that. I'll, I'll just, you know, be a bit more serious. I just had to get out of my system. I had to get it out of my system because it's been stuck. I feel like a DJ. To start off the podcast officially now, hopefully, um, I will be talking about my migrant experience. As I said before, I uh, am a Pakistani migrant to Australia. I came to this country... Uh, over six years ago, in 2016, after doing my uh, undergraduate in Malaysia, a place which is extremely close to my heart. And as I talk about my experiences, hopefully you will understand um, why I have such uh, a soft spot or affection or affinity towards Malaysia. Grew up uh, in Lahore, Pakistan, South Lahore, Shomali Lahore as we say it. Uh, we are the uh, the rough side of Lahore, not the hood side of Lahore, but like a bit of, you know what I mean? Like we're smart, hopefully, or we appear to be a bit smart. So I grew up in Lahore, lived there for 18 years, um, went overseas to Malaysia to do my undergraduate and then moved to Australia. I came to Perth uh, or Perth, as I used to call it. You got to enunciate the R, you know, like Umair. It's not Umair or Umair, it's Umair. Uh, went, uh, well, I lived in Perth for a bit. I came in 2016, 17, during a time where the mining industry was in a slump and times were not so good to find employment, even casual employment, it was, it was a rough time. So like any other sound-minded individual, I thought, if I was to relocate from here, I'd have a better chance at finding my feet and then build on it and hopefully uh, be financially stable in this country. So I moved to Canberra. The plan was to live here for a short bit, just for like a tiny, tiny bit, you know, just like build up 
have some, you know, like a source of income. And using that, I could move to a place like Sydney or Brisbane or Melbourne as well. Um, that never happened. I was, I was here. I didn't leave. It was um, good. No, Canberra is good. I'm just, I'm just being a bit dramatic about it. Canberra has been, has been kind, has been good. Uh, ease of access, it's not overpopulated. You can get anywhere within half an hour. Um, life is slow paced. Um, it suits my old age, as you can tell by the way I'm talking. Um, I don't like big crowds and rush anymore. Thank you, Canberra. Um, have been craving for a summer for the last two years, though. And this year, it's been a bit better. The sun's been out. I've had, I've, as I said before, it's a bit humid right now. But we'll manage. We shall manage. My opinion of Australia before I moved here was it started with cricket, obviously, as Australia would annihilate Pakistan um, a lot. As I remember, first heartbreak uh, was the World Cup final in 1999. Uh, it was a sad, sad day in the Ilyas household. My brother, who's older than me, he cried. My dad was pissed at the television and he didn't want anyone around. I remember we woke up, we were excited. My mom cooked food. We were all going to watch the game. We all ate quietly. Um, the attack of Shweb Akhtar, Vaka, Yunus, and Wasim Akram. They weren't able to defend a score of 130-ish or something, I think. Um, yeah, because Pakistan won the toss and batted first on a wet pitch. Figure that out, huh? But anyways, uh, apart from that, I used to watch Packed with the Rafters. It used to be on cable TV. Uh, the channel was called AXN or ASN, probably AXN. And Packed with the Rafters was this Australian show series on, on TV that um, had a guy whose wife had passed away. And this was, this was just not just a guy, any guy. This guy was, well, he, he, like he did well in his life. He was handsome. He was widowed, unfortunately. He could surf. Uh, was big into the ocean, probably shot at the Gold Coast, Did ha had no idea at the time when I watched it. He lived with his parents, but not in a loser kind of way. He did well in his life. Um, he had a brother who was even more handsome, had long hair, also used to surf. Goes without saying. They also had an uncle who had a pair of boots that stank a lot and he had a hard time finding love because of that. And that's all I remember. And that was my first um, like insight into what Australia is packed with the rafters. Apart from that, I also first found out about Canberra in 2018 in O-Levels. I was looking at the capitals of the world and we thought it was Sydney, but it was Canberra. And I remember at the time... I thought, who would live in a place that no one has ever heard of? Nature would uh, answer that question for me, being in Canberra for over five years now. Um, and now I know. I, now I know what Canberra is. And it's a happening, happening place. Um, speaking of my experience as a migrant in Australia... I had lived overseas prior to this, but obviously this is a change in culture, a change in like in the weather, in the environment. It is a big change for whoever. I mean, even if you haven't haven't ever been overseas and this is your first time, most of the people they come here on their PRs or to a um, pursue higher education here. Um, I would assume it can be a bit of a shock. And some, sometimes people don't realize how lonely it can get. So you sort of navigate towards what you understand, your own people, your own language, and there's no harm in that. You should do it. You're allowed to do it. But we sort of, it, 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 it's, it's hard because you got a, a lot of 
people don't always do well financially. Uh, pursuing a degree here is a bit expensive. So you got to have a job that sometimes might hamper your your life, your social life. Sometimes you might feel a bit shell-shocked, so you sort of roll in. I am guilty of that myself. You sort of like fold inwards. You don't engage with people as much. You're a bit shy, a bit hesitant. Um, and that could be anyone for any background. I'm not uh, uh, pointing towards a certain... Uh, I just forgot what a country is. A certain country. <laughs> A certain brain freeze, uh, you know, you could be from anywhere and that can happen. Um, you just got to over time sort of, you know, be out there, be open to your uh, to newer experiences. Um, and what helps in that always is to have people who are like close to you, making friends, people who you can rely upon, people who um, are kind enough to take care of you and sort of invest in that friendship with you as well. I've been very fortunate in my undergraduate and also here in Canberra to make uh, solid friendships. Um, I just wish well back in my uni that I diversified in my friendship a bit more. But then again, it happens. It's always, you know, I mean, with, with time as you progress, as a year goes by, you can always, you know, reach out to people from all over the world you know and that's how you learn about things that's how you uh understand how they think how they are and what i feel uh being in a country like australia and you know and then also malaysia as well you sort of at the core of it people as they are are almost the same and once you sort of accept that, that everyone is kind of like you, like in a way, they're just human, um, that sort of eases your anxiety if you have it, because I have it, I'm not just here to preach towards the camera, um, I've been through it, I go through it, sometimes just become anxious, you just, you know, um, sort of uh, not put yourself out there as much, you hold yourself back, and I am aiming to sort of overcome that myself. Um, What's important in a country like Australia is that you've got opportunities to uh, to have an income. You can you can have a casual job. You'll get opportunities to make savings. But if you are here as a student, make sure that your target, which is completing your your course, your degree, gets achieved, and you're able to establish yourself in that profession. Um, it may not happen for everyone. But as long as you've got that goal, I think that helps. For someone like myself, I wasn't always sure what I wanted to do in life. So it took me a bit of soul searching as well to uh, sort of uh, have that confidence or have that mindset that, okay, I enjoy this. I will follow this and I will invest my time and resources in this. LinkedIn is very important in making that, making those contacts. Um, you got to keep in mind that you sort of progress uh, in a way that your environment is. So if you surround yourself with people who don't really have objectives and goals, that will eventually rub off on you. Not having a go at anyone, it's fine if you don't have goals or objectives, mostly. Um, but yeah, speaking of LinkedIn, I uh, was uh, <laughs> looking at a post at LinkedIn and this kind of, this is hilarious because... It happens a lot. Um, there was a post saying, uh, drink water where horses drink water. Because horse, a horse would never drink dirty water. Sleep where a cat would sleep. Because a cat would never sleep in a dirty place. Hey man, this is LinkedIn. I'm trying to get a job here. You know what I mean? Um, I uh, It makes me laugh sometimes and laugh. Uh, when like people post these like w just like these vague um, like, statements, you know, like drink where a horse drinks water because, you know, you're a workhorse. Go you. Uh, boy, oh boy. Well, speaking about this year and what I've done, 
because I'm recording this on the last day of the year. I hope everyone who's watching uh, can have a happy new year. Um, I hope that whatever you expected from this year has been fulfilled and that the next year it brings you more success and progress. And with that being said, I know, I just, yeah, I, uh, this is cool though, I'll, I'll just do this as well, and I've got, yep, cool, this, uh, the uh, four, uh, like, options I've got on my uh, recording device, the built-in sounds. I also want to talk about the uh, hyped up TV shows and movies that I watched this year. I watched uh, Rings of Power. I've, I'm have a huge Lord of the Rings fan. No, I have not read the books. Because I'm cool. But yes, I, I do wish that sometimes I would read more. Um, but I just... I've got some books here as well. The Story of Astronomy by... Uh, Peter... Ogden? Yeah, I read four pages. Now it's, uh, it's a prop. I wish... I do wish that I read more. And um, watch Rings of Power. And I just don't understand the negative reviews that, like, it got. Like, a lot of hate. I'm assuming that was because of the House of Dragon from Game of Thrones, like, coming out. They were out at the same time. People were comparing them. Um, it was a bit slow. Uh, the character of Galadriel was... Lacking that maybe uh, that that sort of that that core that could connect her to the audience, it seemed a bit shallow in my opinion. Not an expert, just someone who watches used to watch at least a lot of uh, of uh, movies and TV shows. And but I did it did improve over time with like pace. Uh, episode three and four were actually alright, enjoyable, and then the introduction of Hallbrand. Spoilers here, spoilers, and um, if you haven't watched it, you should, and if you're watching this, which I hope that you are, because I need views, um, to sort of, you know, feed my ego, that's why I'm here, um, <laughs> but um, the whole thing with Hallbrand and uh, the guy who's not Gandalf, that guy, yeah, like the stranger, yes, um, or is Gandalf, whoever he is. Well, I actually liked it. You know, it was I, I, I enjoyed it. I used to watch it. They did initially two episodes at a time, and then it was one episode. I um the like the best thing about it, and I I, I often think about it, and it kills me, because I was thinking about extras and how when um, Adar Adar the uh, first uh, evil elk elf elk yes evil elk evil uh, elf leader who was um and when the volcano erupts and it sweeps out the army from Numenor um and then there'll be Gladriel who's looking for Hallbrand because she can't find him and they walk into like this tent with people who've been you know um who've been affected by this 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 event this incident and there's a guy who's just lying down on his bed and he's just and I, I looked at it and I laughed so hard dude because it's just because imagine okay imagine my name is Gary or something my name is Gary I'm an Englishman who's an extra who's an actor and uh, I get selected for I get casted for for this show for uh, Rings of Power and I'm telling everyone and I, I, I've, I've told my mom who's very proud of me as a British woman, and she's like, oh, you know, this is my, my impression of, uh, my, this is my British accent impression. Oh, Gary, uh, he's got the show. He's in the Lord of the Rings show. Yes, Gertrude is in the show. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, mate, you know. Uh, well, that was Australian, but like, whatever, like, you get it. Um, and then you, like, you're so hyped up about it, and you're like, yes. This is this could be my big break, you know. I'll just break in. Ah, oh, just it's gonna be exciting. Uh, and you end up there. And it's the day of shooting, and you realize 
that and then and then you're there for like the whole day they've got the props up there's the eruption you see the whole brand actor guy and galadriel and all these uh and that australian uh actor who played um the hobbit oh, I, I'm, I'm just so bad with names um and you're like yeah cool you know yeah this is scary i'm i'm i'm, I'm here as well yeah, this, is, this is nice and then um the like the shooting has been done you had a few scenes they shoot it you go home and now the show is out they they had a release date and then um now your mom's also like oh when's the show gonna come out gary and you're like yeah soon you know like it's gonna come out soon it's gonna come out soon and it's gonna be nice and but then like something is wrong in your heart i think i just like bumped my chest too hard something is wrong in here you, you can just feel it you're like oh god oh i wish you know ah oh, this could be my big break and then episode one is gone and they keep asking your friends your girlfriend your wife uh not at the same time yeah either your girlfriend or your wife um they keep asking you know I, I, like i watched it you know i didn't see you there gary and then you're like yeah no no i'm uh, like i can't I, like i can't spoil it for you but i'll be in there later and they go cool so they keep watching it and then episode two and three and then the the eruption happens and you know like now it's episode four and you hang out with your mate you know who's like yeah well you know like what's happening mate i didn't see you there for some reason your guy your your friend is australian um but he's like not australian he's uh he's trying to make he's trying to uh, fake an accent like i am um and you realize as you're watching episode four that that scene was all you got <laughs> You're just, you're just there doing that for like three seconds. And then some guy who's from Pakistan, who's watched the show, is losing his mind over that. And then he talks about you in a podcast, which hopefully he's hoping that people uh, listen to it. <laughs> oh, God, this reminds me, when I was in O-Levels, I remember uh, my first year, uh, there was a, like a telecom company in Lahore called Varid. And they shot an ad in Lahore, in the old Lahore. And uh, our maths teacher, he knew somebody and they needed extras. And the whole lot of us, me and my classmates, you know, we were all like, yeah, hells yeah, we'll do it. And we got paid 3,000 rupees at the time. Good money. We were there for three days, out in the sun, got sunburned. Um, and it was a shot of some like boys who are up on the roof playing some cricket. And um, there was one guy, a big guy, um, who volunteered to be a batter because your boy was shy. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'll, you know. And then one of my friends at the time, he was, uh, he was the bowler. And we were all fielders. And I stood outside of the circle. And there was this camera. And they shot us from different angles. They had a few other teams, one dancing crew, one like just a crew of these like wrestlers and pehalwans, as we called them in Urdu. Um, who were look, like that they, they were like like oiling up and they had their thing that they like a big thing they you know over their shoulder um it's like a dumbbell but it's got like a long like a baseball bat like a giant head at the end of it it's heavy i haven't ever held it it just seems heavy if you look at it um and so we shot it for like two and a half three days and my you know i told everyone Actually, it was my mom who told everyone she could. Yeah, like, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's in the ad, my son. I, like, you know, and I told uh, my friends who were not there and the cousins and stuff. And when the ad came out, I was out of the shot. <laughs> so I've been garried before. I've been garried and I understand. And maybe that's why I saw that guy and it made me laugh. Also watched uh, House of Dragon. Um, controversial statement. I might upset some people. Uh, it was it was okay. I, you know, like it's it's like when you watch uh, Marvel now, it's not as good anymore. It's yeah. So um, it was it was enjoyable up to like maybe first two or three episodes. I'm assuming maybe because they sort of accelerated um the st uh, the story over the years um maybe that's why but i sort of stopped at episode eight and i haven't 
finished it yet, which is um, which is it is what it is. Also wanted to watch Hate, a movie with Robert De Niro and Al Pacino, um, a couple of weeks ago because I've seen snippets of it, but I've never really um, watched it, and I realized that they removed it from Netflix, and also from Amazon. It's not there anymore, and I like. Robert De Niro. I think the scene like I gotta do what I gotta do, you gotta do what you gotta do. And then Al Pacino's like, oh, 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 oh. Maybe not at the time, but like most of his movies, he's like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, and that's my uh, impression of Al Pacino. Um, I also watched The Legend of Mola Jutt when it came out on the 13th of October. The first day, the first show in Canberra, maybe not the first show in Canberra, but I watched it. Um, and I, I've, I've, I have to say, I liked it. I liked the acting. I liked um, most of the actors and their Punjabi accents. Someone with not so good Punjabi accent myself. I was embarrassed on behalf of Mahira Khan. I don't blame her. You know, she's um, she's uh, she's uh, she's an amazing actor. But you gotta be able to have that. You can't like I don't. It's it's hard to explain. Like if I was to play someone Australian, and this is how I talked, you would be like, okay, sure. But how are you playing, like, an Australian-born person? You know what I mean? So I don't I don't blame her. But um Molia Molia Minu Charte Molia Molia me tire nal rena chaniya Molia Molia And I think she never got over the uh, that that uh, she had a she had a drama with uh, Fawad Khan it was called Hamsafar. Ami Ami Aap Kya Karhi Ami Ami Aap Kya Kehrihi Ami So I always whenever she <laughs> <laughs> she's talking or acting I always like you know it's just stuck in my head um, and her like horrible accent by the way like it's just you know you, they could have like gone with anyone but you know, we get it uh, and Hamza Al-Yabasi was outstanding dude like I have not really watched uh, the uh, the original Mola Jat. Um I've seen it here and there in pieces but not in a go so I was um his like his acting, his presence, how you know, it's just it was super amazing. It was just, you know, I was like I was blown away by it. Fawad Khan as well, he held his own ground. He did really well. Um uh, but Hamza Al Yabasi has to take the cake. Uh even like Ali Azmat with that Lahori accent and how he acted, it was it was like pretty good. Um I really liked it. And especially the um uh, I find humor in everything, so this is no this is no disrespect to the movie itself. But when it's like Barbad Hona Chanava, it's it's a bit sus, you know. Like is uh, if you translate it to to um, like word to word in English, that would mean I want to get destroyed. It's giving me uh, like the Drake song with Twenty One Savage. 21, can you do something for me? 21, <laughs> do you think? 21, do you think? It's like, Mola Jad, do you think? Mola Jad, do you think? Mola Jad, do you think? Mola Jad, Mola Jad. But yeah, I loved it. Um, as as uh, it, was, it was long, though. It was like three hours. Uh, like went in at 8.40, came out at like 11.40. Because I go to bed at like 10 most days. And I'm like, yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, but enjoyable. It got better. Uh, the first half was okay, like, um, but it was a bit slow because like they built on it, and then it like picked up. Uh, that uh, masculine, uh, very um, sort of like the protagonist antagonist culture in Punjab, um, my land, because I'm from Lahore. Uh, it was, it was, you know, like I, I, I enjoyed it. I was surprised at how much they showed that these guys drink because, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. Um, art is art. I haven't watched Joyland yet. I've heard about all the controversies surrounding it. I've never, I, I, I haven't had the opportunity 
to watch Joyland, but for all the people who kind of want to enjoy a good piece of Pakistani cinema, which is not often, unfortunately, you should go check this movie out if you haven't already. Uh, it's a good piece. It's enjoyable. Um, uh, uh, it has subtitles as well, so it sort of it'll, it'll like help you um, understand what's happening if you don't hate reading and watching and reading and watching. Yeah, so check that movie out. It's pretty good. Barbad hona chanawa. Maybe in a few years I can play uh, Nuri Nag with like a beard, like long hair. Good old jacked. I also want to talk about the Cricket World Cup of T20 that happened here in Australia. Um, initially, I was not into it. But then you know, Pakistan also like lost to India. And, something like that. and then to Zimbabwe as well. And Australia also uh, lost to England, beach, Sri Lanka. Lost, no, actually lost to New Zealand. The England match was drawn because of rain, um, beat Sri Lanka, but sort of ended up as third in the group and could not qualify. And on the other hand, the law of nature, or Kudrat ka Nizam as they call it in Urdu, worked out for Pakistan somehow. They managed to uh, sneak into the semifinals uh, against New Zealand. And I watched that game. I was there. It was, I had never been to a live game like that. I'd been to Big Bash here, but that's pretty much it. So um, we're all hyped up. I had a big flag on my shoulders, you know. Um, we drove to Sydney, went to SCG, the Sydney Cricket Ground. Um, and the environment there was just mind-blowing. It was, it was, we had shit seats. We were all the way up in road Q, but had fun, uh, lost my, my, my voice immediately um, uh, because of all the yelling and the slogans, you know, Jitega, Bhai Jitega, Pakistan, Jitega, um, that. And I also uh, learned something in uni, which is like, Tara, Riri, Rurura, Hoo-ha, Hoo-ha. Uh, I know Hoo-ha is funny. But um, yeah, and um, it, was, it was awesome. Like the atmosphere there was just unreal. I, it, I felt Again, you know, it was just like, and like how the game played out and Pakistan won and we were all just so happy. And I realized at, at the moment, like I didn't care about any other sport. As an Arsenal fan, um, I also like to watch ice hockey. Uh, I support New York Rangers. I also watch UFC. I did not care about anything else. Arsenal could have lost to anybody. And I was just so focused on that game and came back home. Um, I think early morning, it was like probably 2 a.m. I am a guy who sleeps on the way back. If it's if, like, if it's dark, I am a poor car companion. If it's broad daylight, I am active. I am out there. I'm talking to you. We're bopping to songs. I'm telling you stories, arguing with you, anything you ask me. Nighttime, it's different. I see dark. I'm active for half an hour. You make me sit in the back seat. I'll find myself like a little, you know, like a corner just like this. And as you're talking, I will doze off. And also that's why my friends don't ask me to drive because we want to live. We want to live. So I don't drive at night. Daytime, it's a different story. I will take you anywhere. I'll drive for you. I'll take part in these adventures with you. At night, when the sun sets and I look outside and we're driving on Hume Highway or like Hume Highway, and I look outside and it's dark and I can see the top of the hills and I see in the car and I look outside and I'm thinking things, I just lean back. And as I'm leaning back, I'm gone. Also went to watch uh, the final against England at the MCG. Melbourne Cricket Ground. Uh, again, I had never been. The, the sea of green there, it was, it was heartwarming. Uh, like a lot of people showed up. Did not run into the Barmy Army, but we had four palms in front of us. 
give them a lot of ear. Maybe shouldn't have because, you know, lost the final. Also bounced early. So I'm probably like looking back like, where is this guy? And I was gone with my friends. They're like, yeah, we got to go because we're losing. It was, uh, well, I did leave at the uh, 18th over. So uh, that was after injury to Shaheen. Um, but I wish now that I'm like, talking about it that I stayed back and I shook their hands after all the smack that I had talked to uh, those people. It was so bad. It, like, it got so bad that the guy came to me and he was like, hey, man, I am Irish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we taught uh, how to, you know, do the bhangra, the dance to him as well. Um, and this, this Aussie bloke who was there as well, he was asking me about these slogans, like Dil Dil Pakistan, Pakistan Zindabad, Jitega Bi Jitega, and he was saying it as well. It was it was such good fun. I was so happy that I went there. Again, lost my voice. Um, the train ride home was again very quiet because unlike Sydney, we were just like, yeah, yeah, I did my part. In like in my heart, I was kind of proud that I came here. I paid for the tickets. I supported the country. Um, and also it's good because, um, like these opportunities don't always come. And, you know, um, I was very fortunate to be able to do that. And to all the people whose night I ruined because I kept standing up and yelling and jumping, I apologize. Um, I hope you forgive me. I did apologize at, like at the time as well, but like in a, in a good fun way, like, I'm sorry, this is how I am. Jitaga, jitaga. And, um, yeah, I, I get all hyped up, dude. I get emotional in sports. Like, it's, um, I, um, yeah, it's, so I, like, sometimes avoid, like, watching a live game because I just, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's, uh, um, and also, like, every team I touch sort of dips, so. Not Arsenal, though. Doing well. Number one in the Premier League for now. Hope they sign more players in the January transfer window. And uh, I can probably feed off information from all the uh, football gurus on YouTube and sort of regurgitate it. Um, but yeah, also before um, I end this podcast, uh, as a man who's as old as I am and who's been like around for like a bit, almost like three decades, I would say, um, I realized because I had to call the customer service a couple days ago. Um, about some flight information. And I realized that I don't know the phonetics, like Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. Maybe that's because I know, because that used to be an army serial, like drama on television when I was growing up. It was huge. Um, and I do remember this one time I called some like lady about my cars, like Rego or something. And she was like, L4 and I'm like, long. You know what I mean? Not Nima. I still don't know what H is for, like Hector? Hi. So I just make it up as I go. I'm like I for island. Um, like D for uh for uh, for dog, dude. And that's embarrassing. And with that note, I shall leave you to it. Um, I will release this as soon as I can. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm hoping that I can do more and more of these over time and share some laughs with you. Um, before I leave, let me quickly, um, sort of roll myself out like a professional podcaster, because we are here. And thank you for watching all things Iliarst. Um, I shall say, I shall see you next week. Have a good, happy new year. Be good, be safe. Thank you very much. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.